You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music means it is Friday, it is noon central, it is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know where Vol is? Well, let's find it together. It's time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-scintillating network upon which so many of you are binging every month this year. It seems to just keep breaking new records for us. July, continuing the trend. Thanks to all of you out there who are just mainlining on the on-demand side, joining us live, joining us in the pro, all the fun stuff we have going on out there. Of course, if you want to get even more content in your lives, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to get all that good stuff, including a couple of couple of extra shows a week, including the double dose coming at you right after Volviews today. So it should be fun. So all you pro cats got a lot to look forward to today. It is, quote unquote, Joan Rivers Day on the network. We'll get to that <laughs> in a little bit. Of course, theoptionsider.com slash pro is the place to go for all that goodness. If you're hanging out on the on-demand side, hey, we love all the listeners out there. Just make sure you keep rating and reviewing. Uh, clearly, those most recent ratings and reviews, we have 15 plus years worth of them, obviously. Uh, the most recent ones do tend to carry a lot of weight with the algorithms and with the folks out there because the folks are responding in kind. So if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing out there. It does help new folks discover all the content. And let's see who we've got joining us on the program today to help us discover the world of volatility. First, let's go out. Usually we go out to the southern volatility mecca. This time, though, I've heard a little birdie has informed me. He is actually in the northern volatility hamlet, I guess we can call it. Of Michigan, we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, how are things in the northern volatility hamlet, sir? It's beautiful here. I'm uh, overlooking a lake, uh, talking volatility. It doesn't get any better than this. I'm excited for today's show. Lots to unpack from this week. Views has been recorded from many fun places over the years. I think moving trains... Uh, Don and I did an episode down by the croquet courts in Florida at the FIA show. I recorded an episode once from Hollywood Studios at Disney. So if you go back into the archives, you can find that one, listeners. So many fun places. Now we can add middle of Michigan 
to the ever-evolving list of places from which Evolve Use has sprung forth, listeners, into the world. And also joining us, I'm not sure where he's beaming in, probably from the suburbs of this here fine Chicago, but who knows, maybe he's chasing a storm near you. He is the once and future and now present Dr. Vix, Mr. Russell Rhodes, a.k.a. professor over there at the Kelly School of Business. He's also written one or two or half a dozen options and volatility-oriented tomes. He also moonlights a little bit over there at EQ Derivative. So he's a busy man, wears a lot of hats. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the program, sir. I am thrilled to be back. And, you know, last time I talked to you, I'd just gotten back from chasing tornadoes around yeah, the Midwest. Well, I had talked to you last year. You, you were about to leave for for chasing. So I wasn't sure if I would ever speak to you again. How did that experience no, we, go? We, we, we saw two of them. It was cool. But now I am back from a National Geographic trip uh, around Alaska where I couldn't even get Internet. I, I have no idea what's going on in the markets oh, today. You're quite the globe so, traveling man. First getting sucked up tornadoes, then chasing some uh, reindeer and or polar bears in Alaska. Yep. Hopefully at least saw some good northern lights while you were up there. Not northern lights, but we saw some whales. Oh, whales. Okay. Cool yeah. beans nonetheless. Yeah. We could continue with the wildlife talk, listeners, if you really insist. But I think instead we'll kick off the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was and indeed still is. Maval trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And, you know, this was the day everybody was waiting for pretty much all week. Non-Farms Day kind of giving us some more grist for the mill. Are we in a recession? Is inflation going to overwhelm us? What's happening with the broad economy? And we got some strange numbers which pretty much is in line, I guess, you think about it, because if we are in a recession, it's one of the weirdest recessions in recorded history. Uh, the numbers coming out this morning, you probably heard it by now, listeners. Non-farm payrolls up by 528,000. Uh, people had expected about a quarter of a million, so that's quite quite a beat, which surprised a lot of people. Unemployment also ticking down a little bit to about 3.5%. That's a very low number. So now we're talking about everyone's concerned, obviously, about wage pressure and inflation. And with unemployment low, a lot of people getting higher. It doesn't seem like that's going to ease anytime soon. Uh, so that spooked a lot of people. Of course, we are coming off the heels of uh, two straight quarters where GDP was down. So that's technically supposed to be a recession. Of course, it hasn't been officially declared a recession yet. So how does this how does this new data add fuel to the fire? People maybe earlier remember Powell was sounding a little bit more dovish. People were thinking maybe the Fed would would ease off a little bit. Now this number spooking some people. Maybe people thinking, oh, well, the Fed can't ease up now because if people are still getting hired, if unemployment is low, how can inflation come down? So uh, this is the dance we find ourselves in. That had spooked the street. It is a strange environment we're in where good, strong numbers spook the street, but that's what we're in, listeners. Uh, coming into showtime, we had seen most of the major indices firmly in the red. That has shifted now. We have seen the Dow tick into the green. It wouldn't surprise me if the, by the end of the show, uh, the S&P and NASDAQ follow suit. S&P off about a quarter of a percent right now. NASDAQ off about half a percent. Uh, S&P was hovering around 4140. Got down as low. It sold off to about right around the 4110 level or so. Then it seemed to bounce pretty hard off that listener. So maybe the, the bulls are back out there now. They're saying, you know what? These are good numbers. After all, we want to buy this market. Either way, a lot of uh, back and forth. That's why they call it the dismal science at the end of the day, <laughs> listeners. That means our Val friends when we kicked off the show were a little bit frothier, a little bit higher. Spikes was at about a 22 even. That puts it up about three quarters of a point from last show. Uh, VIX Cash, 2175, up about a quarter of a point as well from last show. VVIX, the vol of vol, remaining right around that 85 handle. That puts it up about four and a half points from where it was this time last week. So remember we said last week it was starting to threaten that 70s range. Once it gets into the 70, 70 handle, you got to watch for VVIX to pop, and it's starting to bounce, whether it can stay here or not, we shall see. Uh, speaking of Vol, of Vol, our old friend, the Viking, I really should say our new friend, the Viking, a.k.a. V-Spikes, a 99.6, that's up 6.6 .6 points 
this time last week. So it has rebounded off of the all time low that is set on the show last week. So a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn the opposite of the way we came. Let's start out there in the volatility hamlet known as Michigan. Mr. Meatball, sir, what are your thoughts on these crazy non-farms numbers we saw, the equally interesting response in the market today, and then uh, what else caught your eye in the ball space this week, sir? Yeah, you know, um, today, total low of the day was the open, right? Total rope of dope They rally it back because it really was a pretty good number. But when you look underneath, there's a lot of part-time jobs, uh, not as much full-time employment. It was an, uh, an interesting number to unpack. Markets are now starting to see it as maybe not as inflationary as initially thought. That's why we've rallied back. Uh, we could be just heading for another, uh, you know, plus or minus five points away from 4150 yet again for today. Uh, you know, outside of uh, really uh, Wednesday, this is going to end up being kind of a nothing week the, at the rate we're going. I think. Uh, let's see, the closing price of the S&P on uh, fr- last Friday was, uh, let's see, the closing price of the S&P last Friday was, uh, let's see, it was 41.3029. We're currently 41.3538. So um, we've basically done nothing all week is what it, it adds up to. And yet VIX is kind of slightly a little bit higher than it was last week. Um, you know, they really came in and slammed it. We've seen, uh, you know, VIX closed on last Friday at 2133. It's currently about, call it 2144. So up a little bit, looked like it wanted to go up most of the week until, you know, they came in and kind of, crushed it yesterday, 21 and a half now. So uh, just a a, a bit of a nothing week, uh, which is funny given all the earnings that are out there. Yeah, we had earnings on the single name front driving some interest. But of course, on the broad front, everyone was really kind of keeping their powder dry for this number. And now, of course, a lot of digestion going on out there. People parsing the number, trying to figure out what this thing really means Mr. Rhodes same question for you first off what was your first take on this this crazy number we saw from the non farms and then what else caught your eye and lit up your tape in the ball space this week sir well it's kind of fun to see uh you know is bad news good news or is good news bad news and and uh you know a whole lot of jobs created uh, makes me wonder if if a, a lot of people uh, I, I honestly wonder if some people are taking a second job because it's so hard to make ends meet these days. And that may have been one of the things that showed up in that number. And uh, but uh, very strong, uh, you know, very strong number for the economy. Can't be going into a recession if we see something like that. Uh, so maybe that's why we're not getting too much of a sell off. Heck, we've got small caps positive now. Um, and the Nasdaq's the only one that's under some pressure, but it's been kind of leading everything up over the past few weeks. And you know, Mark pointed out that 4150 level for the SPX. I think you go back a couple of months, and that's where it topped out before. Uh, Nasdaq's about two, three hundred points higher than where it was at that point. So it it looked like Nasdaq was breaking out, but S and P 500 was testing uh, resistance. So it'll be interesting to see which one wins there. Uh, if if you if you short term trade this stuff. And you don't have volatility indexes on your screen. Shame on you. But the volatility index did a really good job of uh, confirming in the first few minutes of the regular session that uh, maybe buying the weakness was was not going to be uh, such a bad idea. And it, you saw nothing but for the first hour of the day, uh, volatility indexes trend lower while the uh, uh, broad-based market indexes move themselves higher. The volatility indexes haven't moved a whole lot, even though we've gotten you know a little bit of midday weakness out of the uh, broad-based indexes, uh, which uh, I'm bullish and I, I'm sticking with that. I, and nothing today changes my mind on that. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you got a fan in the chat, Options Queen, who's a very prescient vol picker, by the way, says she's looking forward mm-hmm. to uh, Joan Rivers Day on the network. <laughs> so there you go. You got to start your chain smoking. I have my chain-smoking uh, Johnny Carson sidekick for the day, listeners. If you have not heard, Mr. Rhodes uh, will be joining us uh, throughout the day today. He's going to be on later on uh, for oddities, and then you get to deluge him with your questions after that with the pro Q&A. So, uh, Mr. Rhodes, back from vacation, 
and diving right back into work, which is the way we like it. Hey, I was on vacation technically all last month, and we didn't miss a show. So you got to do what you got to do out there. Let's go on out and see what folks are doing in the realm of the Vol products. Let's start in Spike's Futures land. Looking forward to some new updates from those pretty soon. In fact, our buddy, Mr. Simon Ho, the Spike's father himself, will be joining us on the show in the next couple of weeks, and he'll have some interesting updates about what's going on with those new ETPs. They're about to launch and how that's impacting the futures and the options and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So always fun when Simon joins us, even though he has to get up at some ungodly hour <laughs> to make it on the show. He is far across the pond, listeners, but looking forward to that. So we'll get an update on the Spikes futures and everything else coming up pretty soon on the show. Meanwhile, heading out to VIX futures land when we kicked off the show, as you might imagine, the futures were kind of in flux. The market was in flux. Everyone was kind of digesting this number. So we saw this kind of weird scenario where, the front future, the August future was down, but down slightly, down a quarter of a point. And the set future was up, up a little over a tenth of a point out there. So we had this kind of weird moment where the front portion of the curve uh, still a little bit in flux. Of course, you go out, of course, to that period, that October, November period. We are seeing a pretty decent premium. It's almost four points now from the AUG future out to November, that premium, that kind of hump in the middle of the term structure out there. Then it actually kind of plateaus a little bit and actually continues to get even higher into next year. So they are pricing in a little bit more vol. I guess past is prologue now. The beginning of the year, every last couple of years has been just a crazy time. So why not price in a little bit more juice? Uh, Mr. Meatball, we'll start with you, sir. Anything catching your eye out there in the vol futures term structure this week, sir? Yeah, you know, um, I think you nailed it. Uh, that That curve, uh, that front end of the curve has been getting seen a lot of pressure. Uh, it's it's trading like we could see VIX get below, um, you know, get below 20 here in the coming days. Uh, you know, although, you know, the funny thing is, is that that's about the only part that's moved. Um, the uh, SEP future is about even with where it was last Friday after having been up most of the week. Uh, and the uh, really, it's just the, really the front end of the curve that's seeing a lot of pressure and being pushed lower by the overall market. Uh, back end of the curve uh, is actually higher than it was last Friday. So something to, to if you're t- trading into you know into October, November, December, uh, the curve move shifted noticeably higher this week. Uh, but the front of the curve shifted down. So uh, a change in tilt, you might say, for the curve. Um, they've kind of moved some of the the fear anticipation, 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 like that's a word, anticipation out to October. We did see, and we'll talk about the options here in a minute, uh, we saw some pretty big November uh, spread buying yesterday. So uh, that could have something to do with it. Yeah, that did catch my eye as well. The the back half of the curve looking a little bit juicier, a little bit frothier than it was this time last week, which is interesting and uh, probably worthy of further analysis. What are they pricing in out there in the longer term vol space? Mr. Mr. Rose, did you notice that as well? We are kind of in this weird period where the front portion, they're kind of coming for it. The back half, they're juicing it up. So we got this kind of crazy contango going on. What What is catching your eye out there in the vol futures surface this week, sir? Well, it, like like Mark said, you know the the farther dated uh, moved up a little bit, and uh, you gotta assume that that you know the next Fed meeting is not until September twenty first, so you would be looking at the October futures if you're if and the October options if if you're concerned about uh, what the Fed does at that point. Uh, we flip flop very quickly this morning. We uh, coming into the day. Uh, they had a 65% chance of a 50 basis point hike and 35% chance of a 75% basis point hike. And last I checked, 75 basis point hike. And last I checked, it's about a 30% chance of the 50 basis point hike. And now we're 70% chance we're going to get that 75 basis point hike. Uh, so, you know, third 75 basis point hike in a row. Uh, yeah, I just talked about being bullish on stocks. Uh, yes, it, it makes you pause for just a second because uh, last week you even said, "Can you know, have we ever had this great of stock performance with two seventy-five basis point hikes in a row?" Uh, I don't, I don't know if we've had three seventy-five basis point hikes in a row. I severely <laughs> doubt that equities uh, behaved all the way through that cycle. 
So that might be why we're seeing uh, the curve. I always refer to it as a as the curve twisting a bit. Uh, where the longer dated do, does something a little bit different than the shorter dated. And something else that that just going even farther out on the curve, and again, I've been out of pocket for a couple of weeks, but uh, the early 2023 futures uh, are at about a point premium relative to uh, you know no, October, November. I'm kind of skipping over December because actually they're more of a point premium. And I'm skipping over December because, you know, we've got that calendar anomaly and everything. Uh, but you're seeing a, a lot more uncertainty with respect to is the Fed going to be done or not in early 2023. And that's showing up on the longer end of the curve. So the, the curve's telling you a lot right now. Yeah, I, I think that long portion of the curve is kind of interesting right now. And again, it is strange. We have not seen it uh, this hefty of a premium. Usually it has been the October, November period for the better part of this year has been maintaining the crown of where the most juice is, but now they're, they're putting a lot of juice farther out all the way out to March of next year. Listeners are at a 28 on that future. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff afoot. Why do you think they're pricing it so much juice into the beginning of next year? Listeners intriguing stuff. Uh, Sounds like Russell's been doing a little bit of fed watching out there. Hard to blame me on a day like uh, non farms. If you haven't listened you know where to go. See me group.com slash fed watch. It's a good tool to use on a day like today. Let's get on out to the land of the vol options. Like we said, uh, Spike's father and Tom Jark will be joining us in the next couple of weeks to give us uh, updates on all sorts of goodness going on with the Spike's ETPs. Once, once those launch, we do expect a lot more interesting stuff to be going on in the land of Spike's options. Right now, Spike's options kind of keeping their powder dry, waiting for these new ETPs, the big, the big spots right now. Aug 30s still dominating the tape. The July pars, unfortunately, have expired and no one has replaced them. So no August or October pars uh, out there in Spikes land yet. And then we got the uh, Aug 21 puts hanging out for the top positions right now in Spikes options. Uh, Getting on out to the land of VIX options. A little bit light today, but again, the ADB continues to drift lower. So this continues by uh, in a couple of weeks, this will be. More than half of a day's worth of paper. Right now, we're we're getting close, but not quite there yet. Uh, the ADB 433 right now, listen, it's down another 14,000 contracts. And again, it's not exactly surprising. Maybe today we'll see that shift, even though non-farm day, usually good for some decent paper. Not so much today, only 201,000 contracts on the tape. And the rest of the week, as you mentioned, people were kind of keeping their powder dry, waiting for non-farm. So not a lot of paper hitting the tape out there this week. Let me break down a top 10 really quickly, then we'll have a uh, very special weekly rundown to get to, which is always fun. If for no other reason than we get to play one of the, my favorite transitions on the network. We don't get to play it enough anymore. Let's get out to the uh, the top 10 positions, which we kind of started doing on this show years ago, listeners, as a bit of a lark, a bit of a fun thing to kind of throw in there. It wasn't really meant to be seen as a very meaningful indicator, but over the years, I've, I've kind of gotten interested in it now. <laughs> I kind of like to watch the ebb and flow of the top 10 positions in VIX. I mean, read into it what you will. But uh, I do find it a little bit more intriguing than when we first started kind of just joking about it. And right now, one of the reasons I find it intriguing is that yet again, two weeks in a row now, the top 10 size positions in VIX options. Guess what they are? Yep. If you guessed all calls, you were correct. And if you guess once again, the majority, in fact, all of them, 30 and above, (laughs) you would be also correct. In fact, most of them far north of 30. Uh, that's the position we find ourselves in yet again, listeners, which is uh, kind of unique and rarefied here. Cost you 129,000 contracts to break into the top 10 right now. They get you to the AUG 35s, followed by number nine, a buck 42 of the AUG 75s. So here we go, right back at it, listeners. Number number three, or number eight, I should say, of the uh, AUG 30s, and then that's it for quote unquote reasonable paper listeners. The rest is uh is crazy town. Number seven, a buck forty four of the AUG doubles. Number six, a buck forty eight of the SEP fifties. Number five, 158,000 of the SEP 75 calls. You know you're in weird position when the SEP 50s seem somewhat reasonable. <laughs> Number four, 159,000 of the Nov 80s. Number three, 200 k of the March 75s. This person or these people are really loading up these 75s. Uh, number two, 212,000 of the Nova 70s. And number one, still just managing to hold on to the top spot yet again, uh, the Ox 75s. So this person, these funds have just lit up the 75 track across the board. The Augs, the Seps, the March, 
and the Octobers all have 140,000 or more contracts open on them. So, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff to unpack. Uh, We'll get to all of that in a second. But first, it is time for the transition you all have been waiting for, listeners. It is time for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Ooh, that was crazy loud. That woke me up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Time, listeners, for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Mr. Rhodes, what you got in store for us this week? Or should I call you Joe? Uh, you can call me whatever you want. Um, so just don't call me Mark. That would get confusing as hell at this point. That would be very strange. Yes, yeah, so it would be. Uh, let's see. On Monday, somebody came in and bought a call spread. They bought the August 10th, 25 calls, and sold the... August 10th, 28 calls. It cost them 38 cents. If they want to get out of that, they might get a penny for it. <laughs> it's it's not looking good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, somebody else actually sold that trade, uh, took in 36 cents on Monday uh, in a slightly different size. Again, they're looking pretty smart on that. Uh, so two different people, two different blocks, two different sizes on it. Uh, also, uh, a lot of, a lot of, August 31st weeklies, uh, where maybe people have an outlook for the month. Uh, On Monday, somebody bought the August 31st 25 calls and sold the August 31st 35 calls. It cost them 71 cents. And right now, it looks to me like they could get out of that trade uh, for $1.40 credit. Hmm. So Not bad. Kind of a a smart-looking trade there. Um, Then uh, on Tuesday, uh, just uh, an outright buy of... uh, no outright sell, excuse me, of just under a thousand of the August 10th, 26 calls for 70 cents. Uh, they're 23 cent offered right now. So they're looking smart there. Uh, somebody bought uh, 5,300 of the, uh, on Wednesday, somebody bought 5,300 of the August 31st, 32 and a half calls. They paid 98 cents. Uh, last I checked, there were 70 cent bid. So they're, they're okay there. And then somebody also bought 999 trying to be stealth, I guess, of the August 10th, 26 puts for four bucks. Uh, Earlier, they were bid at $3.90. Now they're actually bid at $4.16. So they paid four bucks for those. If they want to take a small profit, they could sell them for $4.16 right now. And then today, um, I'm going to hope this is an exiting transaction because I think this is a terrible trade. Uh, Somebody bought 800 of the August 10th, 27 calls. And sold the same number of the August 10th, 37 and a half calls. Uh, that cost them 15 cents. Uh, you only do well if uh, if VIX gets above 27.15 between now and next Wednesday on the open. Uh, I mean, maybe it's a, a flyer on World War III kicks off this weekend. <laughs> Who knows? And then somebody also bought uh, a handful of the August 10th, 24 calls and paid 45 cents for those earlier today. Uh, I think they were 28 cent bid, 30 cent bid um, now. So uh, not looking too hot on the timing of that execution. But uh, fun things going on on the weeklies and kind of interesting to see a lot of interest in the options that expire on the last day of August. Like, uh, you know, are we going to have an August surprise? We have in the past. So that was Paul Pelosi fading his wife's trip with that uh, weekly uh, call vertical there in VIX. <laughs> not, oh that guy gosh. not giving himself a lot of time to work with. You know, uh, I yeah. can see that Jan or something, maybe a little bit farther out, Dece, whatever. But next week, yeah, I mean, yeah. God, if we if if she files something and he's trading, I don't know if you know, I don't really know if they would have to uh, disclose that he's trading VIX. VIX, yeah, she has no uh, special power over VIX, right? So at least right. theoretically. So, so yeah. right. I mean, he, you know, he would look smart. He, you know, instead of doing individual companies, if he had just done like a semiconductor fund, yeah, <laughs> uh, the, the press isn't bright enough to have picked up on that. Come well, on, Paul. We profiled Smarter some. Uh, than this. We profiled some upside paper in one of those uh, lever chip ETFs, and a lot of our listeners were like, "Oh, that's Paul Pelosi." So <laughs> they were yeah. they were in on that early on. But interesting stuff out there in the weeklies. I, I can't say I love that uh, one week to go uh, vertical. But hey, crazier yeah. things have happened. China was just shooting missiles yesterday, so you know, crazy things do happen. Let's see what craziness is up in a foot. By the way, our buddy on the show, he's a friend of the show, Jim Carroll, was just tweeting out something about. You know, that we've been talking about, I just talked about again here on the show, a figure or a chart from JP Morgan Equity Derivatives 
They're kind of late to the party, but better late than never, J.P. Morgan, saying the VIX call open interest on strikes greater than 40 is at record highs. Yeah, you know, we've been saying that on the show for a while, but glad to see others picking up on it. Jim out there retweeting that as well. It is kind of, he was tweeting about it. What combination of that is speculation? What combination is hedging? Obviously, a lot of that crazy one by five paper going up. Let's see what kind of crazy paper is going up this week. And like we said, not a heck of a lot today. Kind of surprising given the kind of back and forth we're seeing with this non-farms number. Not a lot more paper going up today. Only 201,000 contracts on the tape right now. The big, the big trades such as they are, the most active contracts today, listeners. 14,500 of the AUG 23 puts, 13,000 of the AUG 27 puts, 10,700 of the AUG 75. So those continue to trade Day after day, there's like a 10,000 lot here or there every day of these stupid Doc 75s. <laughs> Number four, we got the Dece 40s, 8,700, rounding out the top five today, 7,700 of the SEP 35s. Let's get on out to yesterday. Yesterday, I mean, pretty anemic, 286,000 contracts on the tape. Still, we saw 30,000 of the No 40s going up and 30,000 of the No 60s. Uh, I think that's the vertical Mr. Meatball was referring to earlier, followed by 21,000 of the AUG 23s. 13,000 of the AUG 24 puts. Those are puts, by the way, both of those. And 13,000 of the SEP 23 puts. Wednesday, exactly a quarter of a million contracts on the tape. So pretty anemic day. We'll just do the the top position that day. And that was 10,400 of the AUG 23 puts. That's it. Pretty light day. Tuesday, 463,000 contracts going up. So, so far, that's the most active day of the week. You can also see, given these numbers, listeners, why the ADV has been trending down yet again this week. Uh, The big dog on Tuesday was 49,800, so almost 50K. Once again, the AUG 23 puts. People have been liking these 23 puts all week long, followed by 39,000 of the AUG 22 puts, 18,000 of the AUG 30 calls, 17,000 of the SEP doubles, and 16,000 of the AUG 27s. Monday, also a light day. Most active contract on Monday, 34,000 of the SEP 30s, followed by 19,000 of the AUG 30s, 18,000 of the AUG 29s, 12,000 of the AUG 25s, and 12,000 as well of these SEP 21 puts. Uh, Mr. Meatball, you talked about some verticals. You notice anything else catching your eye out here in this uh, somewhat anemic week, sir? And what are your thoughts on Russell's little weekly vertical, his uh, apocalyptic vertical? It's a nice sale. Good job. Hats off. Um, Yeah, I would say the big thing uh, was that November call spread. That was the 40-60 call spread. Bit eye-opening. Somebody absolutely playing for um, some sort of uh, move in uh, the November time, uh, somewhere between now and November. Uh, and I was looking at, you know, a few other calls. But for the most part, I would say the biggest piece we've seen is some pretty heavy August put buying uh, and put profit taking. Uh, we've seen traders um, trading the um, the uh, August 23 puts in and out multiple times over the last week. Uh, that seemed to drive things uh, pretty heavily this week. So that that's, I guess, the the main thing I'm keeping an eye on. Yeah, those AUG 23 puts seem to be the contract du jour. Every day this week, listeners, there were a decent amount of those AUG 23 puts. So someone or some folks have discovered 21,000 on Thursday, 10,000 on Wednesday, 50,000 almost on Tuesday. So those were definitely... A hot contract. Did you pick up some AUG 23 puts? You trading those this week? Hit us up. Let us know. Let's get on out to the rest of the volatility ecosystem out there, listeners. Let's go out to uh, inverse land first. SVIX was at about a 13. So that's, that's up about a quarter of a point. So again, not a heck of a lot going on out there. Uh, also, options wise, not a heck of a lot going on today. Not even 200 contracts on the tape, about 177. Uh, the ADV is back below 700, 697. Is that's down nearly 100 contracts? So SVIX not exactly lighting the world on fire. Once again, the top position out there in SVIX remains the SEP 13s. These have been on for a while, 1,390. Given the anemic paper out there, that's actually a pretty sizable position. It's more than 2x the number two position, which are the March 8 puts. So SEP 13 calls, nearly 1,400 of these. You like these? Uh, We're hanging out at 13 yet again. So these look like they have a decent chance of perhaps becoming something, but we shall see. Also, our old friend Uvix at about a 1030 right now, down about half a point from where it was this time last week. Uvix remains uh, the more active of the two new additions. 2,002 contracts on the tape today. Uh, The ADV 5140 up a couple of hundred contracts. That continues to grow, that ADV out there. Also, in terms of top positions, we are seeing 
uh, some decent papers start to line up here in Ubix. Let's do a top five out here. We got number one. We got 3,685 of the AUG 13 puts, followed by 3,300 for number two of the AUG 14 calls. Number three, 3,000 of the AUG 11 puts. Number four, 2,000 of the Dece 18 puts. That's an interesting one. And rounding out the top five, 1,800 of the AUG 12 calls. Let's go out to the once in future Dr. Vix first. It's been a while since we've chatted with you here on the show. Uh, what are your thoughts on the relative performance of our new additions here, S Vix and UVix? Uh, do you have a preference, and does it surprise you that UVix seems like it's growing while S Vix seems like it's having some growing pains, sir? Um, yeah, I'm surprised S Vix is having, as you put it, growing pains because that that's the one I like. I, I like the opportunity to, um, you know, buy something. I, I used to deal with this broker down in Atlanta who had a great Southern accent, and he'd say. He'd talk about long-term holdings. He'd say, just buy it, put it in your pocket, you'll have a profit in a few years. And that's how I think about SVEX. It's just going to keep grinding higher over a long period of time. And you know, we've seen that uh, pros for the first time ever through the COVID situation stayed net short VIX futures. So it feels like the investing community is getting smarter about short volatility being a nice, good long-term play. Uh, but you know, every time every time we have a day where VIX spiked up and SVIX came under pressure, I was adding to my position, and now it's grinding higher. Uh, you know, I, I sell some calls against it and take in a little bit of extra premium and get myself back down to like you know what I would consider a normal position. Uh, so you know, I, I think of UVIX and UVXY as more of trading vehicles, but you know, UVIX has has got uh, what about 280 million under management now. So people are are buying it and hanging on to it, or market makers are having to buy it because we're seeing more and more option activity in it. But I've always been a short volatility guy, so that one is my preference to answer that question. So you are the guy who's doing the whatever it is, 697 contracts a day in SFIX. That's all you, sir. I, I am the, you, you mentioned uh, last week, you mentioned some 13 strike calls, and some of those might have been me. Yeah, they're still open this week. It's a 1,300 I know, of them. I know they are. 13, so there you go. <laughs> Mr. Rhodes piling in. That position's been open I, for a while, know, so you've been know that they're slowly building. You, you said something about them, and I was like, oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm revealing your trades to the world, sir. I apologize. I will, I will stop okay. revealing. I've, I've been doing that to other people for <laughs> decades. <laughs> there you go. Turnabout is fair play. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are your thoughts on the wonder twins here of SVIX and UVIX? Uh, which one is, I guess, by this analysis, SVIX is the one that turns into water and UVIX is the cool one that turns into animals. Would you agree, sir? Yeah, you know, uh, UVIX is an interesting one because, uh, you know, that that double exposure, it, you know, when VIX falls or, or pops, this thing moves like an animal. And uh, it's been a really fun one to watch and trade. Uh, I've also... Uh, you know, SVIX has been one that I've been starting to dabble in in terms of buying buying shares and and using it as a, a potential investment vehicle as vol comes off. Uh, you know, if if VIX goes to 15 and stays there, what? How quickly does SVIX get to 20? The answer is quicker than you think. Um, the one nice thing on UVIX is that markets have tightened up pretty significantly. Uh, you know, it went from one where Markets were 20, 30 cents wide. And now I'm looking at markets where, you know, a lot of times they're nickel wide. You can get what you want done in uh, UVIX, which I really like uh, and uh, and uh, enjoy talking about. Um, and, uh, you know, should be a fun one. Some folks having fun over there in the uh, northern volatility hamlet of, of Michigan as well, it sounds like. here. Let's get on out some of the other products. I'm driving by. Oh, the folks driving by. <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was a drive-by bit of fun. <laughs> a drive-by screaming, yes. You know what? That's better than the drive-bys we get in Chicago. So I guess uh, I guess to each their own. They have pleasant ones up there in the Val Hamlet known as Michigan. Uh, VXX, 21, about 21.10 or so, down about two-tenths, almost a quarter of a point on the week. VXX, at this point, you know, what is there left to be said about it? It kind of does its own thing. It moves to the beat of its own drum. Uh, today, it's doing 33,000 contracts. The ADV is 77,000. It seems like that has hit a plateau because it's unched from this time last week. So maybe we've seen the volatility, or I should say the ADV, the volume erosion. Maybe uh, maybe that's slowing down a bit out here 
in VXX. Uh, still number one, 110,000 of those AUG 16 puts. You know, we were joking about these a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Meatball. You thought they were kind of a fun flyer for a uh, nickel. Did you ever end up piling into any of those uh, AUG 16 puts? Anything else catching your eye out here in the land of the uh, ever popular VXX, sir? Uh, you know, I didn't end up buying those AUG 16 puts. Uh, I guess I'm glad I didn't because the stock hasn't done anything. Uh, I think I bid and I was kind of greedy on the bid. And I'm, again, glad I was because never got a fill there. And those are worthless. Uh, if I was going to pick a flyer today, you know, the AUG 20s for 20 cents are not a bad little play if uh, if something gets resolved with this thing. But I'm just kind of ignoring VXX and have moved on to uh, UVXY and more and more UVX as that thing becomes a bigger and bigger uh, monster and markets get tighter and tighter then. Uh, speaking of flyers, looks like uh, Nichols in our chat says he's he's one of the people trading those AUG 23 puts. He says he bought some of those AUG 23 puts uh, earlier in the week. Seemed like a decent flyer on ball cratering after non-farms. Well, yeah, depending on when you bought them. You bought them around, around Tuesday. You're looking pretty good right now, Nichols. So I doff my cap to you, sir. You and the many others who are slinging those AUG 23 puts out here this week. Let's get on out to uh, UVXY. Again, this one kind of starting to flirt with that dangerous territory. When it starts to get around a 10 handle, things get weird, things get dicey. There always usually is the rumor, the hint, the specter looming in the distance of some sort of reverse split when UVXY gets down to these levels. And it's back down there again, listeners. It was 1040 today, down about 2.2 handles from where it was recently out here. The ADB out there, 273. That's ticking up a little bit, up about 5,000 contracts from where it was. Uh, this time last week. And in terms of today's paper, let's see how much how much paper we got. Actually, UBXY has ticked down even more down to about a 10 now. So it's, it is literally at the 10 handle right now. Uh, in terms of paper today, 240,000 contracts on the tape. So a decent day out here in UBXY. Let's look at the top positions really quickly. Number one with a bullet out here. Uh, the expiring today, we got the AUG 11 calls, 23,000 of those, followed by also expiring today, the AUG 12 calls, uh, 19,600 of those. Then we got the traditional monthlies for number three, 16,000 of the AUG 15 calls. Then everything else is expiring today. Got 15,000 of the AUG 10s and 14,000 for number five of the AUG 10 halves. So 10s, 10 halves, definitely in play. 11, not so sure about that. 12, probably not. Uh, 15, you got a little bit more time on those, but those seem kind of interesting as well. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, I know in the past you've said you kind of get a little bit leery of UBXY when it tends to get around these levels for the reasons I just laid out, all the reverse split issues and concerns. Uh, is that still the case, or are you playing out there in UBXY again, sir? Yeah, and I was going to turn it around on um, the other mark uh, just because hey, I, when I was at SIBO and anything that, that – would bother people with respect to volatility, they would call the Options Institute and yell at me. Um, you know, I'd say it's not my fault that liquidity dries up on non-standard option contracts. But does that, I mean, is that still the case within UVXY? Oh, you just yeah. you just try your hardest not to be in, a, you know, not not have any option positions, but unless you're one hundred percent certain you're going to hold them to expiration. Yeah, you know, well, no, you can get in and out of things, but yeah, those those. Those non-standard options are abysmal. Um, they typic the typical way that these things work is that the day after the split, those standard options will be super liquid. There'll be a ton of volume. Then the next day they list the new options. And when those new options list, the non-standard options liquidity dries up like you wouldn't believe, and you are now in a roach motel. So yeah, don't trade the non-standard options unless you have a serious specific reason to do so because you will get the charge getting in and out will be astronomical uh astronomically high so yeah i'm with you uh i agree 100 percent. don't trade the non-standard options at any given point in time they stink there you go words to live by out there some tactical advice for those of you out there trading ubxy when we're getting into that realm listeners we're starting to get to the level where they have in the past reverse split it so we shall see if we see a notice or if perhaps the markets will do it for them and we'll see a nice uh, pop and vol and UBXY gets up into the high teens again. We shall see. Uh, speaking of things that are pop and vol, a lot of that was earnings driven this week. Listen, we had a big week 
for earnings. Just some of the names that are popping off this week. Activision Blizzard on Monday, Uber, Airbnb, AMD, S-Bucks, EA, Marriott, JetBlue, PayPal on Tuesday, Moderna, CBS, eBay, Under Armour, Good Old Hood on Wednesday, Alibaba, Crocs, AMC, Duke Energy, Papa John, Square, Lily, Kellogg's, Good Old Portillo's yesterday, and DraftKings popping off today. If you want to check them for yourselves, we have updated earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and earnings trades reports for your folks and your trading information and education. And because we like you all, it's all completely free over there. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Click on that options, news, and articles tab to begin your journey to the dark side of earnings vol listeners. You have numbers broken down for Crocs, for eBay, for pizza yesterday. Let's see, what do we have popping off today? We have DraftKings. Let's go out to see what they were pricing in here. Well, we had Beyond Meat yesterday after the bell. Thirty-four oh five. They were pricing in five dollars and seventy-four cents. In the past, they've moved three dollars and eighty-seven cents. So they were pricing in a wee bit more juice. And oh wow, it seems that was merited. They're up seven dollars and sixteen cents right now, twenty-two point eight percent. So uh, Beyond Meat blowing the cover off the ball out there today. I guess folks are eating up. Some non-meat. No, oh, they're cutting their re- they cut their revenue outlook and trimming their workforce, <laughs> and that's enough for <laughs> that's enough for a twenty three percent rally in stock. <laughs> okay, I thought for a second they were actually selling more beyond meat. Apparently, I was a fool. All right, let's go on out to uh, we had DoorDash. Let's keep rolling to we had Lyft yesterday after the bell. Let's do Lyft really quickly. Uh, they were sixteen seventy one. They're pricing in a buck fifty nine in the past. They actually they're pricing in two fifty in the past. They've moved a buck fifty nine, so nearly a buck's worth of extra juice. And they are moving as well, up thirteen point seven percent right now. So a lift on the rampage out here as well. Let's go. Let's skip on to Square. Let's go out. So here we go. DraftKings. They were today before the bell. They were pricing in, they were at 1682 when we ran this report. They were pricing in a buck 84. In the past, they've moved a buck 62. Now, Brian on the show yesterday, he's been, he's been at me for a while. He wants to do a, a fantasy football show here on the network. That actually would be kind of fun. Let us know, listeners, if you are intrigued by that concept. And maybe, maybe we'll get DraftKings to sponsor. That would be nice. Uh, let's see. They were pricing in a buck 84. In the past, they've moved a buck 62. And right now they're up about a buck eighty-eight, so almost exactly in line with their straddle, eleven and a half percent out there. So it's like they knew what they were pricing in with DraftKings, pretty much moving exactly in line with their straddle. Uh, the season update, the updated season report, we're hanging out at one hundred and five percent, listeners. Uh, week three is the banger right now, one hundred and fourteen percent. All three weeks so far are in the green. I don't think we've seen that since the start of the pandemic. Uh, week one, one hundred and five percent. Week two, one hundred and one percent. Week three, 114%. So got three bangers so far. And uh, last season, we were at about an 86. I think actually the average pretty much since the pandemic has been about 86%. So, so far, we are dramatically outperforming. In terms of earnings trades, there's so many they're adding listeners. I can't even read them all here. There are dozens of new trades going up. And that puts us up to 77, looks like, uh, long straddles, 35 short straddles, 53 long calendars we are monitoring for your trading information. Again, Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go for all that goodness completely free. Speaking of goodness, your mail always has some as well. So let's get to a little bit of the old volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. Oh, look at our live chat taking me up a notch saying not just do a show, do a fantasy football league for the network. Oh. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, Nichols, he said he's down for both. Options queen, she said, wow, okay. That's an interesting, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> that could be interesting. That could also be very challenging. If you get in the league with a lot of people, if you've ever been in it, listen, everyone gets like one good player, right? And then a bunch of scatines, as we say, 
in Italian. So we'll, maybe we'll have to limit how many people can get in. But uh, that's an interesting idea. I'll have to workshop that and see uh, how that would work. But that, that actually would be kind of cool. <laughs> All right. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> Color me intrigued. Uh, speaking of intrigued, let's see if you folks were intrigued. Last week, we had our question of the week. And you guys were fading the hell out of that rally in the S&P, uh, given the Fed announcement. It turns out that was the wrong trade. S&P obviously closing well north of 4,000. Uh, we gave you a chance to redeem yourselves this week. We're asking you right now. Uh, the artist formerly known as Facebook, a.k.a. Meta, struggling right now. Stock down over 50%, even though they have been rallying, I think, most of this week. Uh, it was around 163 when we posted this on Monday. If you had to purchase an at-the-money call or put expiring at the end of the year, which way would you go? Would you buy a put to fade the rally? Would you buy a call saying we got more upside to come? Or are you completely done? Are you washing your hands with Meta? Mr. Dr. Vix, we'll start with you, sir. Uh, what do you think our audience is up to? Are they buying themselves some calls? Are they fading Meta? Or are they just done with it completely? They're fading it. I'm, 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 I'm leaning between abandoning and fading, but I'll go with fading it. Fading it. So they're buying a put out there. But a close second would be abandoning. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. Are folks loving themselves some meta? Are they hating it or are they washing their hands completely? I think it's a bit of a washing, uh, washing their hands completely of, of it. Um, you know, it, it used to be a real hot name to trade and now, not a lot of people trading it. Uh, kind of a weird one. That is a weird one. And what's also weird is that I'm having a hard time finding the results. So if my producer can can get those for me, the updated results, I will reveal them in a little bit. Meanwhile, we'll keep rolling on here. Uh, oh, by the way, we have Yang Gang saying uh, the issues they have, Apple privacy rules aren't suddenly going to get better because Zuckerberg wants everyone to believe Narnia is real and we should spend all of our money there. I just like the notion of a, a virtual Narnia. It, it brings a smile to my face. Let's go out to this question here from, from Theodore Domzowski. I've recognized that name. He's written in before. He says, I know you only take questions from the elite these days. Well, first off, Ted, if I can call you Ted, let me just disabuse you of that, of that notion. We take questions from all comers and have been doing so for 15 plus. You know that. You've written in before. Yeah, people in the, in the live chat, they get bumped to the top of the list because they're listening live. They're asking questions right now. That makes sense. But we take questions from all comers. You folks know that. He wants to know, is it possible for the retail trader to sell a spy strangle and delta hedge with shears and make money? This is, this is kind of the, the age-old question that we discussed at the inception, the onset of this show, nigh on a decade ago. We were talking about the ways you could trade vol, and one of the ways you, we used to do it on the floor, obviously, was delta hedging. And is that really viable for retail? And certainly back then with high commissions, big spreads, it was not viable. Commissions are cheaper now. Uh, spreads are tighter, but the age old issue of this being not exactly practical for retail is still uh, still quite the bugbear that haunts this trade. Uh, Mr. Meatball, I'm sure you have people come to you in your pitch chats over the years and ask you variations on this question. They want to trade realized vol by Delta hedging, you know, spy or SPX straddles. What do you tell them? I mean, that's very difficult uh, to Delta hedge spy in a retail account and and really make some money. The reason why market makers are able to use delta hedging is because we're getting the edge of the bid ass spread. Uh if you're not getting that edge, it makes the you know kind of what you're getting out of delta hedging. Uh you know, you're really just eating up your your trade. Uh you're just eating up the the value that you put on. Um can it make some sense on a name that's uh you know had a great earnings overnight? Uh, yes. Totally. Uh, but does is it something that I suggest for all walks of life under no circumstances? Okay, but chat's giving me a hard time learning if tight ends are important. I said that, yes, I said, I said Uncle Michael just learned that tight ends were important. I'm the one who said I was surprised at how few good tight ends there are in the pro. That's all I said. I didn't I know tight ends are important. Give me you guys coming at me left and right over here. Uh Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dr. Vick, same question for you. What do you have to say for uh, Mr. Ted here? Who wants to know, can he delta hedge a spy strangle realistically in a retail account these days? I think it would be very difficult to do um, unless you're just, you know, sitting. Uh, if you're tied to your computer, maybe you can do it. But um, I, in, in this year, uh, I think it's been it's probably been particularly difficult this year relative to other years as well. So it's not, it can be done. Uh, trading costs are so little. And the you know the spread's pretty tight on 
on both the spy and the spy options. But um, I, it's one of those things. Uh, do you know if my next door neighbor offers me five bucks to uh, to wash all of their cars? Well, I know I'll profit from it, but I really want to make all that take all that effort to profit from it. It is, is a, lot that a, of, good analogy? a lot of analogy. That's a terrible like analogy. It's decent. But you I know what I'm it. saying. I could see it. It wouldn't be worth it. It could be done. Yeah, if you're doing it to prove it, you know, like look what I did. That's great. But uh, as a consistently profitable strategy or a way to make money as like a business in your house, I don't think you'd be able to to, to keep up. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page with this. It's just too challenging for retail for a variety of reasons: the margin, the effort, that you know, the commissions, the slippage, all the things you have to deal with. Uh, you just don't have the the setup really in a retail account to to do it and do it repeatedly and easily and profitably, which is the key at the end of the day. Good question, though. Let's really quickly let's pay off our poll here for this week. Uh, right now, 47.6% of you are saying, look out below. Facebook is, you're buying that put. You're fading Facebook completely. 28.6% uh, of you are, actually, no, this is, he's just changed. More votes coming in. So 45.7% saying you're buying that put right now. 30.4, so the call ticking up a little bit. 30.4% coming for the call, saying maybe you like a little bit upside in Facebook. And then 23.9% of you saying you're done with Meta completely. Ops, changing again. More folks voting. Uh, let's, you got two hours left, listeners. This is our question of the week. It ends usually shortly after Volve View. So if you're listening to the podcast, dicey, probably not. Well, you have a chance to listen in live, get in. That's why you got to hang out at options throughout the week to make your voice heard. Meanwhile, it's time for us to make our predictions heard. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. Welcome to the crystal ball. Remember I said at the top of the show, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw the markets tick green. Uh, well, not so much. <laughs> the Dow is still slightly green. Everything else is getting a little bit more red again. S&P down to about 0.4%. NASDAQ off about three quarters of a percent. That means our Vol friends are kind of hanging out pretty close to where they were. Actually, VIX is down about half a point, about 21 and a quarter right now. It was 21.75 when we kicked off the show. Spikes 21.75 as well. Actually, just ticked up 21.83. It was 22, so down slightly as well. So that brings us to our predictions for this week. Oh, we were kind of actually, ooh, I was looking quite nice. 21.75 is pretty much exactly a bullseye. But it was. Now it just ticked. I was now I'm 0.05 away, but still a bullseye for me <laughs> on spikes. I will take that. By the way, Mr. Meepo, I think you had a bullseye recently on the show a couple of weeks ago as well. I don't think you were on to celebrate it. So congratulations belatedly to you. Uh, John also looking good. John hasn't been on the show in forever. Uh, John Smolin from uh, MyAx also pretty damn close to a bullseye. 21.23 on spikes. Not quite there, but 21 or on VIX. 21.83 on spikes. He's close. He's 0.17 away. So I will give him a... Uh, bullseye adjacent <laughs> he's pretty close uh for that one that's not bad for his first appearance in nigh on a year and uh the rock lobster was feeling the teens he said he was going with the prince way 1999 he wanted to party like it was 1999 he's been hanging out with you too much mr meatball uh that unfortunately was not a bullseye so winner winner chicken dinner for me nice bullseye i had a few of them this year it's looking like a pretty good year for my vol prediction game uh, that means i get to pick and you know what i will be charitable I will allow our guest to unleash the dogs first. So Mr. Mr. Rock, I should say, Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vix, a.k.a. Joan Rivers. What are you feeling for this time next week, sir? Oh, no, he has muted himself. <laughs> so, you know, but he said he had put down before he left. Put him down for 1999, he said. All right, he's having some tech issues. Don't worry, we'll have Russell joining us again in an hour for good old oddities. And then after that for a pro Q&A, so you'll get more. You'll get more Russell in your life. And Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you feeling this time next week? Uh, first off, Mark, when you do oddities, you got to look at this trade in ISEE. -E. Uh, just an absolute gift to, the, gift to the upstairs trader. It was one of the most beautiful screw the customer trades that I've Ooh, seen in a long time. Is that from time. today? That's from today. Oh, um, we'll check it out. ISEE. -E. Check that one out. That 5,000 lot with uh, nay 240. Four hundred sixty thousand dollars in edge in it. Ah, so a gift to uh, to the facilitator. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'll make uh, I'll make you good on that. Why not? I'll be generous. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'm giving you a dime on this dollar wide market. 
ah, the good old days. If only we could have made those markets back then. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and like, you know, I was like, oh, well, maybe there's a lot of stock. Nope. 140,000 deltas. Just it could have totally, it would have cost them maybe 10 cents in the stock. So just no reason. Anyway, um, for VIX, next week, uh, where where are we currently? We're at 21. We are at 2135. I am going to say 2002. So just barely. Oh, it's. In palindromic fashion, <laughs> 2002. So you're, by three cents, you are scumming uh, the once in future Dr. Vicks. I like it. He will certainly have Oh, something. no. Did he say 1999? He said 1999. <laughs> okay. I, will, I won't scum him then. Good. Right. Do it. I'll, I, I look forward to his response. No, 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 no. I will do this. I'm going to go. Not only am I going to do palindromic, but I'm going to do a perfect palindrome. 22, 22. Oh, so you want the old ducks route that your buddy, Mr. Rock Lobster, did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he called out ducks. It did not work out. Maybe this week it shall work out, Mr. Meatball. And I shall go last here. You know, I've been looking pretty good the last couple of weeks on my predictions. Uh, a lot of folks fading ball. Mr. Meatball actually going the other way now, going the way I was kind of going to lean uh, as bit as well. I, I don't hate my level for where I am right now for this time next week. I was going to say pretty close to it. Mr. Meatball is kind of close, but I'm going to hang out there yet again. I'm going to adjust it up a little. I'm going to say 2185. Something will conspire to keep us pretty much almost right back up where we are again this time. Uh, this time a week from now, I should say. And that's going to do it. This music for our ball views this week. For all of you on the on-demand side, it's going to do it for your broadcast week. Thank you for joining us and making last month yet another record month for us here on the network. We love you all. And of course, for all of you in the pro secret club, hang out. We'll pump some fun stuff in. We'll be back with two more shows with the once in future Dr. Vic. So get those questions ready. And Mr. Meatball, if folks have more questions about stuff like Delta hedging spy straddles, where should they go? What should they do? You know, I'm doing um, volatility analysis every day at optionpit.com. You can read the blog and what, the way we talk. Go to uh, and learn about VIX. Go to optionpit.com and sign up for the VIX Edge, and you will learn everything you need to know about VIX, spikes, uh, volatility, UTPs, you name it. There you go. Optionpit.com is the place to go. And you guys know where to go to learn about all things spikes, myaxoptions.com slash spikes we'll have some great folks coming in the last couple of weeks to fill us in on the latest updates and additions out there the spike etps coming your way very soon so look forward to a lot of cool stuff from that and again look forward to a great double dose of pro action coming at you a little bit later today options oddities we'll check out uh, the meatballs trade and a whole bunch of others as well as of course all sorts of goodness out there on the pro q a if you haven't got your question in for once a future dr mix get it in now it's gonna be a fun one and then back again next week another episode of volatility views stay safe out there everybody volatility views is brought to you by myax one of the fastest most efficient trading platforms in the world myax is proud to bring you spikes volatility products spikes options and futures are traded on the spikes volatility index spike Offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction. All for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.